Praise the Lord. It's time for Bible. Sorry, Sunday school. Let's pray. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Our Heavenly Father, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, we bless your holy name, Lord. We adore you, precious Redeemer. We thank you for all that you have done in our lives. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for bringing us here today. It's not by our power, it's not by our might that we are alive today, but it's by your special grace. And so, Father in heaven, we want to say thank you. Father, Lord, we ask, O Lord, that anyway we may have gone short of your glory this morning, knowingly or unknowingly, through our words, thoughts, or actions, we ask for your mercy in the name of Jesus. We commit this study unto your hands, O Lord. We pray, O Lord, that you shall speak through me, O Lord, and speak through each and every person here in the name of Jesus. We ask, O Lord, that you give us understanding in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answer the prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Please who can remind us of our last Sunday's topic. Call, right? I'm permitted to call anybody. Try for now, what was our last Sunday's topic? The Christian Entrepreneur. Thank you. Let's clap for her. So, who is a Christian Entrepreneur? Who is a Christian Entrepreneur? Please, anybody. Yes. So, like, personally, I believe that there's a thin line that separates the church from the world. So, like, unlike other entrepreneurs out there, a Christian entrepreneur is a person, let us say, that is into business, but his sole purpose is to use his business just like what is expected of the life of a believer to bring glory to the name of God, basically. Thank you. Please, let's clap for him. Thank you. Thank you. So, last week, we, talk about, we talked about the Christian entrepreneur, and then we also gave examples of people in the Bible that were entrepreneurs, Abraham, Jacob, Peter, different things that they did. And then we also gave characteristics of an ideal entrepreneur. You have to have the ability to recognize an opportunity Desire for independence. You want to be independent. You have to be self-confident because if you're not self-confident, people will ride on you. You have to be willing to take a risk because if you decide not to take the risk and then at the end you're not achieving anything because if you're taking the risk, you may fail, but at least you know that, oh, you can do it a different way and get it. But then if you're saying you don't want to take the risk, then you're not going to go anywhere. Praise the Lord. So today we are talking about running businesses as Christians, running a, running a business as a Christian. And our Bible passage is taken from Psalms 37 verse 3 to 9. But before we get there, let's just do our memory verse. Our memory verse is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19. Please, if the media would help me put it on the screen. 2 Timothy 2, verse 19. Oh, it's also in our, bi- in our manuals. So if everybody should join me to read, 3, 2, 1, go. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of the Christ depart from iniquity. Praise the Lord. So let everyone that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Let everyone that calls themselves a Christian depart from sin. Let everyone that calls themselves a believer depart from things of the world. Praise the Lord. Our Bible passage is taken from Psalms chapter 37, verse 3 to 9. Please, if you're there, please read. Shine like the 
situation that the moon gives us, it seems because the Lord and we Satan do not Do not stress when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. We pray from anger, we turn from wrath. Do not stress, we need only the evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed. For those who hope in the Lord will be carried to the land. Praise the Lord. So from that passage, we can see trusting on the Lord, committing your ways to the Lord, and he would help you, he will establish you. And then in verse, from verse 7, it says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fear because, because of him who pr prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. See it from anger and forsake rats. So do not fear because of him who prospers in his way. The people of this world that are using different means to make their businesses work, we shouldn't be concerned about them. We shouldn't be idolizing them, basically. You shouldn't, okay, because yes, this person's way is working, so let me just follow their way. It says in verse nine, for the evil doers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. He also says in, I think Isaiah 40, verse 31, wait on the Lord and he will renew your strength. So even if you're saying that your business is not having products, it's not being productive, or it's very, very small, you have to still wait on the Lord because he will renew your strength. He is still going to make you successful. There was something that our choir mistress said yesterday that God does not owe anybody. He has seen how you have, you're struggling or how you have struggled, and then in the end he will pay you back. He will give you everything that you need and your joy will be full. Praise the Lord. So wait on the Lord and you shall inherit the earth. Think about it. Anyways, our lesson introduction says, while there are many paths to success, not all of them are ethical and recommended for a Christian business owner because the way you define success is probably different from the way a non-believer defines it. To build a successful business, you must know the biblical principles for business success so that you can use them to achieve your goals as your goals to the glory of God. So we're talking about those principles that you need to achieve your business, to achieve success in your business. And our lesson outline one says biblical, pre biblical business principles. The principle number one, I, I want you guys to take notes because... There are nine principles, and we are going to be looking into them. So principle number one says, God owns it all. He owns it all. It says, as a business owner, it is easy to think you are the boss of everything. You, you own, you are the boss of everything, and everything you own belongs to you. Knowing God no, owns it all, you will survive to do, you will strive to do everything for his glory, and Sean's business and shun business practices and ethics that are not pleasing to God. Praise the Lord. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. If you're there, please read. fathers as it is this day praise the lord thank you so he says that you shall remember the lord your god because he is the one that gives you the power to get well wealth am i right sorry i haven't found it yet yes yes remember the lord your god for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day so from the Bible, we can see now it is God that gives us the power to get wealth. So if God does not want us to get wealthy, we wouldn't be wealthy. So we should re realize that it is God that owns everything. He's the owner of the universe. He literally made this world. So anything he wants, anything he decides, he can do it. Anything he wants, he will do it. So we shouldn't say, take, oh, the business is mine and everything. Everything that proceeds from that business, because it is God that gave it to you. He deserves everything that comes from that business, basically. 
So when you're when you have that mindset, you know that everything you're doing in that business is for the glory of God and not for your glory, not for your own profit, but also to glorify God. I think that will now make you realize that there are th certain things that you shouldn't do as a business owner because God is watching and he deserves his glory. See your business to further the gospel and the kingdom of God. Use it as a platform to witness to others. Praise the Lord. So this one, I actually saw a business. I don't remember the page I saw it, but I think they were selling perfumes. But at the back of the bag, like the bag that they used to package it, there was a Bible verse there. Mm -hmm. So even if a non-believer is buying from that business, they will see the Bible verse and say, oh, what's this? And then search it up and then see what it said. So that's like a way of sharing the gospel. It could have even been like different Bible verses, but that's a way of sharing the gospel. Because when people see something, they want to be curious to know what it is and know what it says. And then when they go into that place, they can eventually find Christ. Let's also look at First Corinthians 10 verse 31. It says, Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So whatever you're doing, do it for the glory of God. Whether you're walking, whether you're sitting, with whatever you're doing, do it for the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Principle number two, add value. We should create products and services that we would gladly purchase ourselves because you go over, because they go overboard they go over and beyond high standards praise the lord so you should add value to your business if you're doing something and then you're seeing that this is not even something that you would want this is not something that you would enjoy then you shouldn't be doing it because it's just like it's just like preaching the gospel now and then not practicing it saying oh do this and do that and then you're not doing it so whatever business that you're doing you should be able to say oh yes i actually want this thing it's a very very good product it's a very very good business and then it is beneficial to both me and then other people around let's look at romans 12 verse 11 not lagging in diligence so you should be diligent in what you're doing your business you shouldn't just say oh let it just be there you have to put every effort you can every every strength in your being to make it's worth it to make your business worth it to make your business stand out it says being excellent at what you do is a fantastic way to honor god and to love our neighbors do unto others as you want them to do to you so if you're doing something and then you know that this is not how you would want to receive it this is not how you would like it to be then you shouldn't be doing it because do unto others as you want them to do to you in matthew 7 12. Principle number three, act and work hard. Do not just talk about starting a business or changing your current marketing strategy, act. So you can talk and talk and talk, but if you're not doing anything, you're not going anywhere. It says faith without work is dead. So even if you are believing and then you're saying, oh yes, this is what I want to be, this is where I want to be at. You have to make actions. You have to do things to get to where you want to be. You have to be intentional. Also, do not just complain about something when it is not working well. Go and fix it. If you're trying to reach financial independence through starting a business, work hard and work hard. Working hard will help propel you towards that. Let's just look at Proverbs 12, verse 24. If you're there, please read.
the hand of diligence will rule, but the lazy man will be put to first level. So you have to be diligent. Again, another place where the Bible is making mention of being diligent. If you're saying, oh, this thing is not working, you have to make intentional steps to fix it. And if you decide to be lazy about it, you'll be put to first label. So the, the hand of the diligence will rule, no matter what. Another Bible verse, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4. It says, he who has slack hands becomes poor, but the hand of the diligence makes rich. And verse 14, it says, wise people store up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. So this is just telling us to work hard and then not to be lazy, not to slack, but keep working. Principle number four, wisdom. You need wisdom to make the right decisions for your business so you can avoid making irreversible or costly mistakes. And in J James 1 verse 15, it says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not make you, he will not rebuke you for asking. So if you need wisdom, if you are lacking wisdom, you should ask God because he is generous and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking because he knows that you need wisdom. So if you're lacking wisdom, you ask the Lord for wisdom and he will give it to you. Do not be afraid to pray for wisdom or to be too, or to, or be too proud to see God's direction for your business. He says, commit your ways unto the Lord and he will direct your paths. Thank you. So... Commit your ways unto the Lord and he will give you direction. If you're confused, if you're lost, just commit everything to God. Principle number five, humility. To interact well with people, especially clients or customers, you must remain humble and approachable. You cannot have a bad attitude and then expect to be wondering why people are not coming to you. You have to be humble. You have to be humble. You have to, even if you are not saying it, you have to bring yourself, if you know, how someone is. There are certain ways that you approach different people. It's not the same way that I talk to my brother that I will talk to Amanda. It's not the same way I talk to Amanda that I will talk to Trifina. There are different ways that you approach people depending on that person's character. So you have to be humble and then be able to, uh, be able to understand and be able to speak to that person in a way that they would also understand. Praise the Lord. Principle number six, the right business skills. To grow your business, you must be skillful. Invest in in upskilling yourself. Invest in upskilling yourself. Invest in upskilling yourself. That's like we are talking maybe going to a workshop or something. You know that there are certain skills that you lack, and then you need it for your business to thrive. So you have to invest, even if it may cost you a lot. You know why you're investing and you know what the product is going to be when your business is fruitful. Praise the Lord. Principle number seven, the right tools and resources. Invest in the right tools, technology, social media platform, websites, and business management resources to make your operations both effective and efficient. Let's look at Proverbs 18, verse 15. It says, the heart of the prudent acquires knowledge and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. So there are times that there are some people that are so proud that they know that, oh, this is a problem that I have and this is something that I'm lacking. But then asking for help is a problem. So we have to be able to ask for help. We have to be able to seek help. And also invest in him. Like I said, it may cost you a lot, but you know why you're investing. You have to build yourself skillfully. Getting the right tools and resources, it may be costly, but God will provide. Mm -hmm. Principle number eight, make money honestly. Do not cheat, lie to or scam people out of their money. Build up your business on integrity rather than 
in illicit gains. L taking a look at Proverbs 13, verse 11, it says, Wealth gained by dishonesty will diminish, but he who gathers by labor will increase. So, for example, now, if, let's say, I know that somebody, how will I put it? Okay, there are two different categories of people now. Like the working class, maybe you're full time, you're out of school and everything, and then a student. So if you have fixed a price, right, for something, you should sell it to both categories at the same price. But if you want to be considerate, you can say, business owners beware do not allow your business to become your idol do not allow your business to become your idol you should be thinking of other things other than your business it shouldn't be just your business or nothing your business shouldn't be an idol an idol is something else something that you worship you may not even know that you're worshiping this thing but it will show by the amount of time you spend doing that activity or the amount of time you spend with that person or that thing. An idol can be anything. And you shouldn't make your business an idol. The Bible says that you cannot serve two masters. So you're either serving God or you're serving your business. And there should be time for everything. Secondly, it says do not serve mammon, mammon instead of God. I think I had already said that. Next, it says, do not make your business priority over your family and friend, friends. Let's look at Proverbs 18, verse 24. It says, a man who has friends must himself be friendly. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. A man who has friends must himself be friendly. So it's just like, okay, this is your business. And then you have to have time to spend with your friends. You have to have time to spend with your family because your business is not your whole world. You still have a life to live outside of that business. You still have everything ahead of you. You still have relationships to form because even the friendships that you form, you don't know how helpful it will be for you in the future. So do never prioritize your family or your friend, sorry, never prioritize your business over your family or your friends or reasonable relationships. Do not jeopardize your health because of your business. There are people that would be sick and still say, they know that they are very, very sick and they would still say, oh, I cannot not do my business. If you die, who will run the business? You cannot say, oh, I'm sick, but you have a business to run. Good and fine. Take care of yourself. Because if you're dead, there's no point of the business. Your, you, the business is not following you to the grave. It's not following you anywhere. Do not neglect the worship of God for your business. Do not neglect the worship of God for your business. Worship of God, your relationship with God has to be your major priority. Because, as I said, the business is not fleeing you to the grave. And what you do here matters. So if you're not, let's say your relationship with God is not good, but then your business is like, high. It's not going to work out. Even if, you, even if things may be seeming like, oh, it's going well, going well. But at the end, we are not staying on this earth forever. You're still going to go to heaven or hell, wherever you may go. And, and you have to work on your relationship. You shouldn't say, oh, because, you shouldn't say because, oh, I have a business. God doesn't matter. God always matters. He's the owner of the universe. He chose to make us alive and we are here today. 
so prioritize god over your business if you haven't done you you have options actually god has given us the choice it says choose life or death but choose life avoid selfishness sinful practice and disorderliness avoid selfishness don't be selfish it's just like oh donating to charity and then you're like oh this money i i have already planned to do to do something with it but like even at that you have to like be considerate of other people like people that don't have food people that don't have time i say time people that don't have food people that don't have clothes if you have things to give to them you have a business you have a business for there are certain amenities, okay, you can start up a business now to pr producing clothes or selling clothes. And then you know that there are people that don't have clothes. You can say, oh, I'm going to like give this part of these clothes to those that, to the orphanage, to give to children that don't have clothes, to give to people on the streets that don't have clothes. Praise the Lord. So we've come to the end of our Sunday school. I want to ask a question. So I wanted to ask, why is it, why is it, um, why is it important to not jeopardize your health because of your business? Um, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, as you said, um, you cannot you cannot run your business in the grave. The business does not follow you, and <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like because ev everything in this world, like everything you have, stops at the grave. Then from there, it has no meaning in your life. No one is going to come to you every morning and be like, okay, I want to do this in your business. I need your permission. So without you, the business will run. So it does not... Let me just stop it there. So yeah, without... You cannot run something if you're not alive. It makes no sense. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I think I, I noticed a trend which is very, very similar or very, it's a usual trend among Nigerian folks. Um, we often say it is well, it is well, it is well. As a matter of fact, I've met different Christians from all walks of life by God's grace. It's only Nigerian folks I hear it is well from their mouth. It is always well. But I discover something again, just like um, just like the Ecclesiastes says, I have gone around the world and I discover, I discover, I discover. I discover something. That a lot of Nigerians, we know our family history. For example, in my family, there is um, high blood pressure, right? And because of that, I try to reduce my salt intake. I would never say it is well and be eating junks <laughs> all the time. My mom, now I'm giving these, I'm personalizing it so a lot of you can learn. My mom is diabetic, right? She's seated here. I run away from pop. I only kiss pop whenever she open pop, she can't finish it. When I come home in the, and I, I just kiss it, I drop it. <laughs> and I've been trusting in God to help me not to kiss pop again. <laughs> because my mom is diabetic. I did not say it is well. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Long story short, my people are perished. For what? Lack of knowledge. What is the knowledge? Knowledge about your body. Go through your family history. Check what is wrong in your family medically. Stay away from risk factors. 
it is always well. Praise the Lord. Look at the general overseer. How old is he? He's looking younger than me. My head is bald. <laughs> Do you know why? Because he's always detoxifying his body. He's always fasting. He's giving to life of... You never see him taking ice cream, taking cheeseburger, eating... You understand? So let us learn how... Go through your family history. Go check what is going on in your parents' body. Right? We know it is well. But check what is inside of you. Know your knowledge. Know knowledge about your body. And stay away from triggers. Amanda had a question. Okay, never mind. So, thank you very much for everyone that contributed. My people perish for lack of knowledge. You should know what is wrong with you, with anybody in your family, and then every other thing. Praise the Lord. Another thing I wanted to add: as being a Christian, you cannot separate your business from your life, from your Christianity, because being a Christian is a lifestyle. You cannot say, oh, this is business, this is business, leave God out of it. Mm -mm. You can't do that. So, God first, then your business. Christians need to take lead and build the next Amazon, Google, Facebook, and Microsoft. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, there's an assignment at the end of the, uh, at the end of this lesson. So when you do, please submit it to Sister Amanda. Thank you. Let's pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Our Heavenly Father, King of Kings, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for another successful Sunday school. We ask, O oh Lord, that we shall be here, we shall not just be hearers, but also doers of your word in the name of Jesus. We ask, O oh Lord, that you give us wisdom, O oh Lord. Those of us that are lacking wisdom, we ask, O oh Lord, that you give us wisdom in the name of Jesus. We ask, O oh Lord, that you shall help us, O oh Lord, to put you and you alone first. We ask, O oh Lord, that you help us, O oh Lord, and remind us not to separate you, O oh Lord, from our businesses in the name of Jesus. Help us to do everything with integrity in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen.